Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We have been learning the mysteries of the faith. Aren't they exciting? We know that we must live by faith. With whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So we're learning how to live according to to the principles that God has laid down for us. And today is the most exciting one, the mystery of the rapture. And this is what every true believer has to look forward to. And it could happen any moment. So we're going to be reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now, we have already told you that the second books of the New Testament, as you read them, are all teaching against apostasy in the last days. But this one is teaching about the coming of Christ. First Thessalonians. And Paul was in Thessalonica for one month, and he taught the doctrines of the faith, salvation, election, assurance, security, the Trinity, and the return of Christ is mentioned in each one of these chapters. And the first one we're going to see is chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians, verse 10. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And we go also to the book of Revelation. We just finished all of the seven churches, and he tells us in chapter 3, verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. But we are going to be raptured. Now, when he wrote this in Thessalonica, we can understand what these people were going through just like today because it tells us in this book that they needed to be encouraged. And this is what this book is all about. Paul said in verse 3, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God, and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in the power and in the Holy Spirit. And in much assurance, this is what we have, assurance, as ye know what matter of man we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. You see, the afflictions are coming. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So that you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. You see, the first thing we're learning here is they were steadfast, steadfast endurance during all of their trials. And verse 8, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. They knew, for they themselves show of us what matter of entering in we had unto you, how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And then verse 10 is our promise. And then we go to chapter 2, the 19, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? for ye are our glory and joy. And then, of course, we see verse 13 of chapter, th of chapter 3. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable 
in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all of his saints. And then the rapture is in chapter 4 of Thirst Thessalonians that we will get to. So let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, help us to be like the people in Thessalonica, that each one had joy in afflictions. We know, Heavenly Father, that in the last days the afflictions are going to be great. But Thou hast told us in Thy Word that Thou hast given us perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because we trust in thee. And thy word says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we're to rejoice in our sufferings, and we're to thank thee and praise thee every minute of every day for our salvation for eternal life, for forgiveness of sin. And every person that don't know this truth and have this hope that is within us, may they know today that they can rejoice even every moment of every day as we look for the rapture to take place. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. Save each and every person that listens. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we go over this, we're going to see that we've had the seven mysteries of the faith, and this is very important for us. The mystery of godliness was the first, the mystery of the indwelling spirit, the mystery of the one body, and the mystery of the seven stars. And these three go together, the indwelling spirit and the one body, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So this is the only true church, those that have been cleansed by the precious blood of Christ. So then we're looking for the rapture. We saw the seven churches and how he had a message for each person, for each person. And this is an individual message. Each of us must accept Christ individually. And this is what he teaches us as we learn how to live by faith. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And of course, we have already seen what faith is. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. Not only do we have to have faith for salvation, but we have to have faith to live according to his word. So here we have, if you want to receive Christ as Savior today, this is the only way that you can be saved. For by grace, God's grace, something we don't deserve. Are you saved through faith? You have to believe that Christ died for you and that he arose the third day and that he's in heaven today preparing a place for you. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. So first of all, faith is just believing what Christ has done. And you can't add anything to what he has done. And we also see every, all children that have gone to Sunday school, Bible school, or Awanas or whatever have learned this Bible verse, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the gift of eternal life. It's just like, as we have told you many, many times, that the Holy Spirit that came upon Mary and conceived in her womb and gave to her this Son, Jesus Christ, for us. It was divine conception. We must be born again by divine conception by the Holy Spirit. Every person that is born again, it is divine. This word is divine. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in heaven before he came to this earth, and he came 
as a baby to go to the cross to die for each and every person in the world. And we can see that this is happening even today, that the false teachings, we'll get to that possibly next week, and the deception. And this is the next one that we're going to see, the mystery of iniquity and how it doth already work. This is a serious time to be living. I pray that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And as we get through this with the rapture, you're going to see what God has for us as true believers. It is the most exciting thing that can happen for you to look for the hope of His coming. So we see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and he says he would not have us ignorant. We're, we're to know his word. You see, that's the problem today. We know very little about the word of God. That's why we are really asking each of you, college students, high school students, to write to us at our box number and let us know if you would like to be taught the word of God. We will do it free. You do not have to pay anything for what we do because we don't do this for money. But we would like to train you to serve the Lord and we would like to train you and teach you God's word. This is the only way we're going to live by faith in the last days is to know the word of God. And we would love to train you young people that many of you can't afford to go to college. So we want you to know the Word of God. That's the only thing that you are going to learn in life that is eternal. It is lasting. So we're praying. This is our prayer as we start. And we want you to know that we're going to continue to give this out, that this is for each and every person in the area. And so we see that he tells us not to be ignorant, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. You see, this, it's a terrible thing not to have hope. I mean, it's a, it would be a terrible thing not to know that you're going to be taken out of this world before the things come in the book of Revelation and the mystery of iniquity that we're going to teach you about. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's verse 14 of 1 Thessalonians 4, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, shall not precede them which are asleep. Now we have, we have shown you these many, many times. We're going to hear the trumpet blow. We're going to hear the voice of God because this is the most important thing that any of you can learn about what is happening. And this is in first Thessalonians, you need to study these truths. For the Lord himself, he's going to come, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, those that have died, in Christ, you know, have to know your child of God first. This is the most important thing in your life that you have made a decision to accept Christ as Savior. Then you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. When the time comes for you to draw your last breath, so those that have gone back to dust, that's all you do, your body, there's nothing in your body, you go back to dust, these are the first ones that's going to meet the Lord in the air. And you see, when you reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, that is where you, as a child of God, receive a body of light. And this is the first people that are going to come out of the dust. That's why you are buried. You go back to dust. You're to be buried. Then we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this is the truth of God's word. So here is where we're going to be changed. 
we are going to be changed. And we need to read this and know this. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, this is the mystery of the rapture. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die before this takes place. But we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Now, when we go to this lesson in 1 Corinthians, we're going to see why the rapture must take place. The rapture has to take place for the body. We are the bride of Christ. We are the body and Christ is the head. So the body has to be joined to the head. We are the bride of Christ and he's the bridegroom. So as we read these truths in 1 Corinthians, he tells us what we are going to do. We're going to be changed in a moment. And the trumpet's going to sound. For this, incor this corruptible, this body, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So then this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. This body, this flesh and blood cannot go to heaven. And this mortal shall have put on immorality. Then shall we be brought to pass, that is said. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is there sting? There's no sting of death for a believer. O oh, grave, where is thy victory? It is victory for us. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which cause gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's victory over death. So then we also see in these lessons as we come, why does the rapture have to take place? Well, first of all, it must take place because God's word tells us this is prophecy and his word must be fulfilled. We just read that. His word must be fulfilled. And we're also leaving time. The rapture is the fulfillment of the resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all of you know that when he was going back to heaven, he said in his word, John 14, 2 and 3, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And then we also have to turn to John 14. And this is another scripture that you must understand and know because he tells us in his word, John 17, that was John 14. John 17 tells us that we are going to be with him. He desires us to be where he is. John 17, 23 and 24. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. He loves us the same as he does his son. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. For anyone that's just lost a loved one, this is a comforting message because he desires that we be with him. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And then, this is answer to prayer that for we to have unity, that we will have, we will be one with him. He desires this for us. And we see also that there's three parts to the harvest. The harvest, the first, he is the first fruits. Now we, we see that he is the first fruits of them that slept. This is what we must understand in his word that Christ is the first fruits of them that slept. So we go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead, this is his resurrection, and become the first fruits 
of them that slept. Then we which are his, but every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Because he arose from the dead, his resurrection, I'm going to be ascended into heaven just like Christ. And here we have, for in Adam all die, you're going to die if you don't receive Christ. In Christ all live, you will never die. So here we have Acts 1.11. He said, the two men stood in white apparel. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. He went up bodily. And that's what's going to happen to us. We are going to receive a new body and meet him in the air. This is what the rapture is all about. And we saw last week how he is standing at the door knocking, trying to get in the churches. Today we're living in the days of apostasy and we must see that Christ is coming soon. At his first coming, there were very few people looking for him. Today, there's very few people looking for the rapture. In fact, they mock you and laugh at you when, they tell, when we tell them the rapture is coming. And they are fulfilling prophecy because it tells us that they will laugh at us and mock us. So we see this is what's happening today. And we see in the rapture also, we know that we, after the church is gone, this is when the hours of darkness has never before seen on this earth is going to be great. So the rapture then is the first transformation for us as believers. We're going to be transformed into a body of light. And then now we see how we know the Old Testament is like a picture book in the New Testament. Christ fulfilled everything in the Old Testament. And we're going to see that because after we get through with the seven mysteries of the faith, we're going to have the covenants and the dispensations. And we're then going to have the four suppers and they are exciting. So here we see as we turn to the Old Testament, to Genesis chapter five, we see a picture of the rapture in this young man that we read about in chapter five of the book of Genesis. Now Enoch, he was 65 years old when he had a son called Methuselah. Now you children need to know these truths. This was Enoch, he lived 65 years old, he had a son. After he had a son, he lived 300 years and he pleased God. This is important as we learn about Enoch. He was taken out before the flood. Enoch was taken out before the flood. And then we go to the New Testament and find out about Enoch. And as we find out about Enoch in the New Testament, we must go to Jude. That is the last book of apostasy, just before you get to Revelation. And it tells us what he was like. He did three things. He pleased God. He prophesied of the second coming of Christ and preached against sin. If you're not doing those three things, you're not doing what God's word tells you to do. First, he says in Jude chapter, there's just 25 verses, in verse 14, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murderers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's person in admiration, 
because of advantage. But Beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there shall be mockers in the last day, saying, Who shall walk after their ungodly lust? That's what they're doing. These are the mockers walking after their ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit of God. You see, unless you are born again, you're going to find out when we get to our lesson next week on the mystery of iniquity that the place for you is the final abode of Satan. You must be born again or you cannot know that you are a child of God. And then we come to Hebrews, the Hall of Fame. It tells us that by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So because he did please God, he walked with God and pleased him for 300 years here, we have him being taken into heaven just like we are going to do. Are you ready for the rapture? This is the most exciting lesson that you can have because when we get into heaven, we're going to have at the marriage supper of the Lamb for true believers. What a supper God has prepared for us. Now, the the saints coming back that Enoch wrote about in Jude, this are the saints of God that's coming back with him when he comes back to reign on this earth for a thousand years. This is the rapture. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb. And this is the coming back to this earth when God's going to put down all the evil on this earth and we're going to reign with him in peace and righteousness for a thousand years. Bring your friends in one by one to the place of way I still to the 